so much going on, man. I am uh, excited to do this. I have man, to I... tell you that I didn't, I didn't listen to the podcast. I haven't listened to your podcast yet. Uh, cause I wanted to be, I want to have like a genuine reaction, you know, I, I don't want to like yeah. be too in my head about it, yeah. but I'm really excited to listen to it. Cause your first guest ever was little Frank. That's right. Who had a shop just down the street from where I grew up. Oh shit. I passed his shop like tons of times. Yeah. Cause he was from Decatur, Illinois. Yeah. Uh, and yeah. so like, I don't know how many times I've driven past his shop and my friend got his first tattoo there and, oh, sick. you know, he was, so how, how do you know little Frank? I guess, I guess just curious. Lil Frank is literally one of my best friends ever. Cool. Um, we, we met each other when we were doing a, a guest spot in uh, Elm Street in Dallas. And uh, man, what was that like? I want to say 10 years ago. Might have been a little bit less than that. But uh, okay. man, I fucking love that guy to death. We just, I don't know what it was. It was just one of them things like, you know, you meet someone and you're just on the exact same page and you just, yeah, like, yeah. That bro love straight away. And sure, uh sure. Yeah, man. Yeah, that's it. It's funny. Yeah. So he was like my obvious. He was, you know, when I said I was gonna do the podcast, he was obviously always gonna be my first guy. To come yeah. Out. Yeah. That's cool. That you I know, remember he, it's crazy. Yeah, I remember he had a really sweet, it was a pink, a salmon pink and gray 56 Ford, I think it was. I don't know. Yeah, uh, but like I remember seeing that all over town growing up and you know. He, he always looked like his episode, you know, I was like maybe 12 at the time and I'm seeing this yeah. guy cruising around in the 66 Ford. I'm like, I want to do that. that <laughs> so cool. Yeah, that's cool. Are you working today or? Uh, yeah. So um, I take care of my kids full time. Um, cool. And so then I have Thursday, Saturday and Sunday where I work in the shop during the day. And so that means basically Thursday is the only day I have to go like meet people in the real world. You know, like if I have yeah. to go to another shop or something. That's the only idea I have. And so all the work on, you know, on, on everything I do here in the shop, it's uh, it usually happens at eight o'clock. So like three in the morning, you know, yeah. after after my kids have gone to bed or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, when do you sleep? Um, well, for the last about nine months, <laughs> I haven't. It's, yeah. It's been, it's been kind of rough. Uh, yeah. So how many kids have you got? I got two kids. OK, cool. I got a, a four year old and a two year old. So yeah. Yeah, yeah they are. That's, yeah. that's that's the good ages. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck yeah, no sleep for you, man. Yeah, I uh, my my youngest is five now, so she's like, she's just a bit more independent now. She's like sleeping yeah. on her own. And, yeah, yeah, but that's the age where like they want to help you, but they can also like follow along. You know, like yeah, the two year old like he wants to be involved, but like he's two years old. He's two. Yeah, yeah, like, of course. Yeah, but like my my four year old, she'll like. She knows what drawer the wrenches are at. And she's like, oh, you know, I had a guy come by with a um, a hay rake yeah. on, behind his tractor and we had to fix it. And it was during the, you know, I, I had, it was during the day uh, when I had the kids. And I'm like, well, I had the kids, but like this has got to get done because it's broken. He's got hay drying in the field. He needs to go harvest. Yeah. And so, you know, my four year old's like, oh, I'll take this wrench. I'll take that wrench. And she's yeah. like tearing all the wrenches out for me. And we're just, you know, just getting it done. Yeah. So, well. Yeah, it's, it's a lot of fun because they're like, you know, they're really super interested in what's going on here. So they're, they're yeah. the fucking memory. They're the like, they're the memories that you'll never forget. Oh, yeah. I mean, they're the things. Oh, you, yeah. 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 I love that shit. So, so is that what you do? That's your job then? You Are you fabricator, uh, yeah, engineer? I'm, I'm a welder and a machinist. Okay. Um, uh, not actually an engineer. Um, and I, uh, so I have my own shop. It's 12 feet behind my house. You know, like cool. so my commute in the morning is 12 feet. Um, and I fix uh, everything. It, yeah. it, where I live in Illinois, uh, the predominantly that people grow corn and hay okay. or alfalfa or other types of grass. And so I, what, I, what I get a lot of are uh, agricultural machines. Um, we have a chocolate factory in town that I've done some work for. We have... You know, it's just industrial stuff, but it's actually yeah. it's it's a fun technical challenge. But at the end of the day, like it's just a piece of machinery, and it's, there's no soul to it. So, but that's yeah. that's what I that's what I do. Uh, that's what I've done for a while now. Um, so that, that's yeah. the same as as a lot of the well, you know, the builders, the built well builders, any that I spoke to, they've all got kind of like normal jobs, and then they need to do this to like for like an outlet for some sort of like creative. Yeah, because I so I started machining in like 2008, I think, and so I um, 
I spent so many years perfecting all these different skills and I never really put them all together in a cohesive idea. Right. And so then I had this idea, well, I just built my own engine because I know how to do all the individual parts. Let's just like, like fuck it. We'll see if I wait. Can I swear? <laughs> yeah. Is that okay on the podcast? Yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah. Don't worry about that. Oh, fucking hell. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Don't worry about that. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, yeah, I, I had all these individual parts and, you know, um, individual skills. And I thought I'll put them all together. And uh, uh, it's been something I've wanted to make the time to do for a long time. And then, you know, it at a certain point became obvious like what i am doing for money is no fun at all yeah so like i'm not getting any younger put up or shut up like just do the damn thing yeah man. yeah so, so yeah. is that why and, you entered the competition to kind of give you like a um i thought the competition would be a good kind of slingshot to yeah. um reach a lot of people yeah. um yeah yeah and yeah. I went from like having, I don't know, a couple hundred Instagram followers to I'm at like 4,500 ish now. Yeah. And I, I'm not obsessed about the follower count, but like I, I really love the messages I get from so many people and getting to meet like minded people. It's yeah. just, it's been a lot of fun because of that respect. But so the competition, I, I thought, well, um, I could do this thing for absolutely no reason just by myself. Or I could also enter this competition and then, you know, have a yeah, lot of totally. fun and, and compete against some guys. Um, but, uh, yeah, I, I, I don't have a great solid reason why I entered the competition other than I was going to build the bike anyway. Might as well yeah, yeah. enter. And, I, I can totally relate with, like, that's why I do the podcast. It's just to meet yeah. like-minded people. Just Yeah, just, yeah. I, I'm, it's kind of selfish, to be honest. I want to I want to learn. I want to, like, I'm like, that's it. I want to speak to the best people and, and form a relationship and wake you up at three in the morning asking you dumb questions that I should probably know about my build. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's cool. So, I mean, I don't, I don't know where to start with this build. Okay. Uh, so I don't, I don't, <laughs> you say, sorry, you say, you say you're not an engineer and maybe, yeah. maybe you're not a qualified engineer, but I feel like you are an engineer. <laughs> Uh, yeah. So I took some physics classes in college. Okay. I didn't finish college. I went to college yeah. and I was like, Oh, this is not for me, yeah. but I did take some physics classes and I like, I like, I learned enough to be dangerous. I'm good with math. Okay. Cool. Um, but yeah. Uh, so I don't know where to start with this build either. Um, I guess let's just lay out the facts maybe like, so yeah. Yeah. Like, I uh, mean, what haven't you yeah. built on this bike? Uh, the transmission is absolutely bone stock, 1947 okay. Harley, yeah. big twin. Other than that, uh, the cylinder head came from a right uh, radial engine, uh, an R975-46. It came out of a Piasecki Hup 3 Retriever helicopter. Um... <laughs> I'm not laughing at you. I'm laughing at, like, I... It's crazy. No, it's, 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 it's so bizarre. Great. Yeah, it's absolutely it. bizarre because yeah. the idea of like, like a chopper is a really personal thing to build. You know, when you're building yeah. it for yourself, and you get to really like dig through all these parts and you come up with a personality for the bike. But it's also like, in a way, a reflection of you. Or you, you know, you're you're somehow bound with it. You know, totally. because you spent all this time on it. And so, I think that gives you a little bit of a sort of a window into who I am that like, I, okay, so here's my genuine thought process. So I went to a, a bunch of swap meets looking for a knucklehead. I would love nothing more than do a knucklehead with two front cylinders. They call it the four man's Vincent. I want to do that, but I don't have the 10 grand for a knucklehead. So, so yeah. Al brain says, hang on, let's just go to eBay and buy some cylinder head and build an engine about it. Cause that'll be cheaper. Right. <laughs> Which is not, not at all a good idea. <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, it was it was a learning experience. Um, yeah. I, I look back at some drawings I made. I started it in January of 22. I started doing the, the first drawings of the crankcase yeah. in January. And then, um, then I found out about the Giltwell competition, which, like, I'd always been aware of it because um, I remember, oh, gosh, it was, I don't know, five or six years ago. When it was still show class, I was aware of it. I had voted every year, but 
But, uh, you know, at some point in, in making this engine, I'm like, oh, um, I should really enter this into the competition. Um, so I better slow down a little bit because I don't want to build too much of the bike. That was a terrible idea. Because uh, I, I was under the impression like it all had to be done for the competition. So I intentionally right. hung back a little bit on the motor. And, you know, I didn't really think too logically about that because it probably would have been better if I had just, uh, you know, built the motor and, and gone into this thing with a running motor. But, yeah, uh, yeah so so the motor is um, single cylinder from the radial engine. The uh, the front suspension, I sort of patterned it off the Vincent Girdrolic forks because uh, I, I love girders, but I love the, uh, the, the Vincent Girdrolic forks. They have these extra spring tubes. And it comes from, they were the biggest bike at the time. They made a 1,000cc bike, I believe. And it was really popular with sidecar users. Right. And it was popular with sidecar users because the way the front suspension was set up, you could, you could tweak it for, uh, by, by moving things around, by moving bolts and pivots around, you could either tweak it for solo riding or for, for sidecar duty. Right. Um, cool. But it's, 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 it's its own thing. So I thought, well, let's just take that and make it longer. Yeah, yeah. Um, and so I made that out of, it's all started out as just bar stock, aluminum bar stock. Um, the frame is all just, uh, it's like loosely based on a big twin frame. Mm -hmm. Just because I didn't want to step back from this thing and say, oh gosh, what have I done? It doesn't look like a bike. It doesn't, you know, it's got yeah. goofy performance. Yeah, yeah. So I thought yeah. big twin frames are so iconic. Let's, let's stay within that general ballpark. It's, it's a few inches, you know, um, the, the neck is the neck is 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 a lot um, a lot more rake to it, but it's not up or out or anything. It's right. just raked a little bit. Okay, cool. Um, but it's it's close to big twin. Um, and then the rear hub I made, I made my whole hub and I made the brake drum part of it. And I was thinking, um, there's these brakes that are uh, on Model A Fords. They had an aftermarket set of brakes called a Rocky Mountain Wide Five brake. Right. And the drums have these holes in them to where you can see the brake shoes in there. Right. And I thought, well, that's about the coolest thing I've ever seen. Let me yeah. see. Can I use one of these as my rear hub? And there just wasn't a good way to do that because the brake is 12 inches in diameter and it's just not going to fit inside a 16 inch rim and have room for spokes. Yeah. So yeah. instead, I, I did the typical Al thing where I went and got a big block of aluminum and I made one that sort of looked the same. So, yeah, um, you know, it's, I don't think anything on the bike was a great idea, <laughs> but it was all just like what I felt like doing, you know, there was no, yeah. there was no like strategic engineering behind it or anything like that. It's just, uh, why not do this? <laughs> That's, it's crazy to, to, cause you'd think the, you would think there was, you know what I mean? It, it's, yeah. It's and each step away, each step of the way. I didn't know what was next. So really? like I I had the frame, I did the frame first and I knew sort of what I wanted for the front suspension. I knew how long I wanted it to be. Yeah. But I didn't actually know what it was going to be until I made it. And the you know, so like where the engine was going to fit in the frame, I didn't know that until I physically had it, you know, framed together and had that engine in there and I'm moving it around and tweaking it this way and that way. I didn't have I didn't have, I, I don't have anywhere one cohesive drawing of the whole thing. That makes it even cooler. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, I kind of, I kind of like the Bob Ross approach. You guys have Bob Ross, right? Yeah, you know, yeah, the happy yeah, little yeah. accidents. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. That's cool. I, mean, I thought, I thought it was going to be the other way around. I don't know why. I just, I just thought you would have, you were going to have like this set fucking plan that you stuck to the, you know, right. Oh no! It's yeah. a, it's a whole series of little tiny improvisations. Fucking um, right! Like so, like my favorite part of the whole bike is the carburetor, mm -hmm. which is a uh, it's a Weber DCOE um, 40, 40 millimeter carburetor, and a internet friend is like, "Hey, I have this carburetor. I'll sell you this carburetor." He gave me a great deal on it. He sent me. Uh, like two or three books on how to really tune the thing and you know and so that was that'd be perfect we'll use that carburetor and when i got it i didn't realize that they don't have the trumpets on the end of the carburetor as part of the carb right okay and so i i started looking around to buy those and i didn't i didn't realize how they all worked and so i just called up the guy that did the glass blowing i'm like 
can you make some glass velocity stacks for this? And he's like, I'll try. Because yeah. like, if there's one thing hippies know, it's how to get air to go through glass, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, totally. <laughs> but it was, you know, total, total accident, totally, you know, I had no plan to do that from the start. It was just, I, I didn't know how the carbs worked. I didn't realize the velocity stacks weren't actually a part of the carb. Right. So I turned it into an option and, you know, an opportunity to just uh, improvise. Yes. Is, that, is that the same person who did the, the headlight? Yeah. So he did the headlight yeah. um, and the headlight, he, uh, he posted a picture of a bong he was making nice. and it was in an in progress picture. And I said, well, hang on a second. Can you do that again? Because it had this really cool effect where when you moved it around the eyeball moved, because there's like a lens in front of it, which was oh, not shit. a lens. It was just extra glass. He was going to turn it into a different part of the ball. Yeah. But because it acted like a lens, the eye had the effect where it would follow you. And so That's I said, cool. can you do that again? Make me a headlight. And then I had him make me a taillight and then called him up again and said, hey, can you make me a shift knob? And, uh, and he, uh, <laughs> you know, I, every time I called him, I tried to give him as little information as possible not not yeah. maliciously but just um if i try and constrain what you're gonna make yeah that's the best, way, the best thing to do design, with an artist. yeah right instead if i let you play in your space it, yeah. you're gonna get something really awesome and so he um his first attempt at a shift knob he's, he's going along he's like oh this isn't gonna come out big enough but let me know what you think i'm like no that's not gonna work at all but send me that because I have a place where this will work. And so yeah. I used it for the speedometer block off on the transmission. It was, awesome. you know, because it's this little tiny, uh, I don't know, about an inch in diameter eyeball yeah. on a little a little stock there. And I thought, oh, that'd be perfect for a transmission block off. So That's fucking awesome. So, I guess I should say that the guy that did the glass work is Jesse Briggs. Awesome. Um, he's, uh, he's Canadian. So. Well, do, you, do you know his Instagram? Off the top of your head, uh, Maritimer Glassworks, awesome, oh. awesome man. It, it's it, it is the but is it running yet? Uh, no. Uh, no. Engine parts are on the bench behind me. <laughs> but you you made so, all of that, didn't you? You made them. Yeah, yeah. Oh yeah. Fucking crazy. I started off um, going through. Um, catalogs looking for parts that be close and um i was i really tried to use an off-the-shelf connecting rod and the connecting rod for a cummins 5.9 liter diesel is really close to what i needed but it's just not quite and there's so many other parts of the bike where i've really tried to use off-the-shelf parts and in the end it would have been quicker if i just made the darn thing to begin with Fuck. but so i just you know I made uh, pretty much all the engine internals. Uh, the only thing I really didn't make are the lifters. Right. And then the cam, I made the core and sent it out to somebody else to grind it. Um, but, uh, you know, it's not a normal approach to building a bike. <laughs> I'll give you that. Do you think you bit off more than you can chew for the time? Uh, for yeah. The so, yeah, um, absolutely. And what it comes down to is in my mind, there's 24 hours in the day and you got to sleep yeah. like six of those. Yeah. And so, uh, you know, what does that leave you? Like 18 hours. I'm like, oh, I'll just work those 18 hours. What's well, that? Life doesn't work that way. You know, <laughs> yeah, you got to mow your lawn still. You got to, you know, you got to tell Especially with two kids. Kid. Yeah. yeah. There's all these other things. And so where I thought that, oh, you, you know, I'm a machine. I'll just power through 18 hours a day till this is done. It, it did not work out that way in the slightest. Yeah. But, uh, you know, I don't have any regrets. Well, I have one regret. And, uh, okay, so get you know, along with not finishing on time, the, the one thing that bothers me is, um, you know, there were 20 contestant, contestants. So, like, whoever was number seven in the voting, like, I feel really bad for them because uh, last January when we had the voting, I 100% thought I could finish on time. Yeah. But yeah. now, looking back, I'm like, I really wish that guy, whoever it was, I don't know who it was. Yeah, yeah. But I really yeah. wish that guy would have had this spot because um, there were so many cool bikes that didn't make the cut. Yeah. You know, that I really would have liked seeing, you know, finished or, you know, uh, promoted to that level. Yeah. So that, that's fair enough. But I mean, everyone would have been excited to see what you were doing. Do you know what I mean? They, it, 
Yeah. So, yeah. Serve the spot. Do you know what I mean, how, how long do you think it'll take for you to finish it? Um, finished? I don't know. I'm a perfectionist, so finish could take another few months. Yeah. Um, I'm really trying to get it running before I leave for Born Free, which we're leaving the 20th oh, cool. of June. Um, I don't think it'll be rideable. I think it'll just run I, if everything goes right. Mm -hmm. um, I have a guy coming tomorrow with liquid nitrogen so he can shrink fit the crankshaft assembly. <laughs> so, um, yeah. but that'll be, uh, you know, that's that's what I'm aiming towards. Unfortunately, I had to stop after. So after the deadline, I had to stop and work on customer stuff because uh, yeah. I got to pay the gas bill to get out to uh, to Born Free. Like I'm yeah, on a, yeah, of course on a shoestring budget as it is. So yeah, you were saying that you were feeling uh, burnt out. Yeah, um, and that was like I. So I've done a lot of huge projects over the years, yeah. uh, and I've never. It's normal for me to have a little crash after I finish something because there's just yeah. so much time you put into something. You need a little time to recover. I've never had that happen before I was done. Yeah, <laughs> it wasn't. It wasn't something I was prepared for. But there was, you know, um, for two weeks after the deadline. I didn't touch this thing. I just looked at it, you know, sitting there in the other end of my shop. And it's just like, uh, someday, uh, you know, yeah. um, and, and even now I'm to the point where I'm forcing myself to work on it. I don't, I don't still, I still, I don't feel like it, but I'm yeah. forcing myself to just finish it up because, um, like I've, I've paid for my, for my, uh, my travel to foreign free, like I'm going regardless. Yeah. yeah so yeah. I'd like to bring the most complete machine I can. Yeah, of course. But, uh, um, you yeah, like burnout. it defeated you. Um, well, but see, like I'm not unable to keep working on it, so I don't feel like it yeah. defeated me. But I do. I uh, I'm let down with myself, I guess. Yeah, yeah, man. Uh, you know, because you know, in January, I fully thought, oh, this is no problem. I've got all these benchmarks I need to make to yeah. get this thing done on time. February 6th, I, I went to bed, did not sleep the whole night. I remember this day so clearly because yeah. I'm like, I literally don't have enough hours of the day to get this thing done. And so I'm up, up at three in the morning. I'm writing out a whole list of everything that has to happen, who I have to contact for, yeah. for you know, individual little parts. And then, you know, it seemed like everything I touched took a little bit longer than I thought it would. And, you know, that's fine. Everything does, especially when you're trying to polish it, and, you know, make it as perfect as you can. Yeah. Um, but at the end of all that, like, I don't feel, I don't feel like the deadline is unreasonable. I knew what it was going into it. Yeah. Um, and I don't feel bad that I didn't finish in time. I'm just like disappointed in myself. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, it's, but it's like, it has nothing to do with the rest of the competition. Like, you know, yeah, I totally. see a lot of people yeah. on online that are, they're like, oh, you guys should give them the same deadline is you know the born free builders which you know like, you know like you get to build right up to the show if you want to and it's like well that's not that's not what we signed up for and i i knew that you know yeah but uh, so do, do you are you um are you pretty harsh on yourself when it comes to are you like like i'm my worst critic you know everything i do oh, everything i make oh I yeah i hate yeah oh yeah. yes well see this is this is how i know this bike is good yeah. because 99% of what I do make, I step back from it and all I can see are the little places where I could have done better. Yeah. And like I put the front end on this and I stepped back that night, probably like four in the morning. I stepped back and look at it like that. Like that fucks. That's yeah. awesome. This is, <laughs> this is it. Like yeah. I have done something now that like instantly I am proud of. And that is such an unusual reaction for me to have. Yeah. I knew that was it, you know? Um, cause usually absolutely I'm just tearing everything down and, yeah. you know, in machining, if you miss a dimension by a thousandth of an inch, it's wrong. Yeah. And whether you miss it by a thousandth of an inch or a full inch, it's still wrong. So, so it's easy for me to tear down what most people would see as a perfect part because yeah. I'm like, Oh, I'm outside of the tolerance a little bit or whatever it is. Um, but no, with, with, with most of this bike, I, I would, I would step back along the way and I'd be, Oh, this is way better than I could have dreamed of the tank going into the tank. I didn't think that that was going to be hard. Mm -hmm. which I've never made a tank before. 
right? I've never made anything out of sheet metal before. I made my planishing hammer and then I never used it for anything. I made a lid for one of my wife's pans. <laughs> uh, I never did anything else besides that. So like literally zero, zero sheet metal experience. And I thought, oh, this will be easy. I'll just knock out a tank. I don't know why I thought that. I don't, I don't know. I but mean, compared like, to like week. building an engine out of a fucking helicopter, <laughs> like it probably, you know, right. I, you know, I get yeah, it. <laughs> in, in perspective, I guess. Yeah. Um, but like a week later, I'm like, oh, well, here's, you know, here's most of this tank I thought would take me a day. Here it is done a week later. Yeah. Um, but, you know, once I finally set it on the bike and stepped back and got that first real look of how, you know, because when you have the pattern on there, it's a pattern. It's OK. But like to have the real tank on there and actually know what it's going to look like, I was like, "Oh, this is this is good. Yeah. Like that'll do." I can't even imagine. I can't like that. It, it's too daunting for me to even to even attempt to build all those fucking separate little parts. It's yeah. Um, I spent most of my life um, building and repairing industrial machinery. Yeah, and so like all the building blocks of what you knew, need to do engine machine they're all there yeah, yeah um, of course but uh, so how did you begin then how i mean how did you first get into to the bike side of things <sighs> let's see um so i've always liked motorcycles but um i can remember I bought my, my wife and I bought our first car, like new car. And we were out just driving it home from the dealership. It's kind of late at night. We were going to the gas station, fill it up for the first time. And this guy comes by, four guys actually, but one of them was riding a panhead. And he had the skinniest forks I've ever seen on a bike. And he had, um, two real short exhaust pipes on the thing. And it looked kind of like he'd taken a stock flexible pipe and just cut it off. But like, it was dark enough. You could see the thing belching blue flame as he came up to the stop sign. And instantly I'm like, I don't know what this is, yeah. but this is what I want. Like, this yeah. is, you know, this is what I'm into. This is like, I, I got to know more. Yeah. Um, and yeah. so I had it in my mind that I was going to, you know, buy an old bike or something. And then as I started my business, I kept putting it off yeah. and I kept thinking, well, you know, I could buy a motorcycle or I could buy motorcycle parts or I could buy another machine and get better. And then when I do build a bike, it'd be a better quality bike. And I just kept putting that off for like 12 years. Yeah. And so this is the first bike I built. This is the first time I've tried to do this. Um, and like I had like I've only owned one other motorcycle and right. it was ready for this it was a 1984 kawasaki 440 like it's not 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 Holy anything shit. good like it's just it was the tiniest little thing and i'm i'm six feet tall and most of that's in my torso so i did not fit yeah. on that at all um <laughs> that's yeah. even fucking crazier because the bike it's even fucking that's crazy that's you would like, not you would, no, would not have thought that you that you weren't a total fucking like motorcycle enthusiast collector fuck it you know what i mean like oh but like crazy. i mean the thing is like i eat sleep and dream motorcycles like all yeah. the time yeah. but yeah. i've always yeah. just prioritized buying something else than buying yeah. you know whatever project you know and i don't know why i don't like it doesn't make sense why i would do that um yeah. you know but because, like, I would love to own an actual Vincent. It doesn't even have to be a Black Shadow. It could be, you know, it could be anything. Yeah. But, like, I've never gone out and actually searched for that to buy. I'm just like, oh, that'd be nice someday. And someday it keeps getting pushed back and pushed back and pushed back. Yeah. And, you know, um, I think that, uh, you know, that's one of the reasons I guess I did the competition is it forces me to have a due date on the thing. Yeah. It forces me to, you know, just, like, get it done and go as wild as i want with it because yeah, yeah. you know yeah. this is the time to do that it makes it makes room for that sort of yeah so. a, i i get that as well because i um i watched my like first kind of like chopper documentary uh, it's called six over i watched that like fucking years ago and i think it was like five years until i got I, my first bike i would just yeah uh, research and research them i would save up and then i'd be like but once i had the money then i couldn't decide what i wanted to buy 
So then it would just yeah. end up going on a bills or, or whatever, you know? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, get, I get what you're saying. I should also mention that I spent uh, part of my career building um, cars, building okay, old cars. Cool. So, um, like, I built a couple of trucks that went to SEMA. Mm -hmm. um, like, it, it, um, one of the trucks that I worked on actually took third overall. Holy like, shit. you know, some That's... pretty serious show vehicles. You know, my name's not on them. I was just yeah. one of the hired guns who did the work or whatever. But, like, I had been around this sort type of work enough, and especially with early Model A's. Like, if you go look at a modern car versus a Model A, it's just a four-wheel motorcycle. Like, they're, yeah, they're yeah. so incredibly bare bones. They're so tiny. You're hanging out of the door. You know, you don't need to fit yeah. in the thing. You're just basically on it. Um, it's the same kind of thing. Um, and so uh, it was easy for me to be like, oh, well, um, you know, I've got to learn all these things and perfect all these skills. And then I, you know, kept getting opportunities to buy Model A's that were really yeah. cheap. Oh, let's buy a Model A Ford. Let's buy let's buy, uh, you know, an old truck or something like this. And like, yeah. because I had this idea of what I wanted as a motorcycle that was so like on a pedestal, I wasn't going to spend money on that until it was going to be perfect. Yeah. And yeah. then finally I just went a totally different direction, bought some cylinders on eBay and said, Hey, let's make a motorcycle. <laughs> out of it. So I mean, what's your, I'm guessing this is a keeper. I'm guessing you're not going to sell this fucking thing. Um, I could sell it. Yeah. I'm not, I'm not, uh, I'm not sure. So the person who would become its owner would have to be a really unique person because it's not something that you could, um, it's not going to, okay. So it's got a five inch four and a five inch stroke. So it's not going to run smooth. Okay. Like it's not going to be a really comfortable long haul motorcycle. Yeah, okay. it's not going to be great for LA traffic. It's yeah. not going to, you know, like yeah. there's a lot of places where it just wouldn't make sense. Um, with all the glass on it, I'm sure a lot of people, you know, without being extremely careful, would just tear the thing up. Um, so yeah, I did think that I was going to ask you, like, like, how strong is this glass? <laughs> well, so it is for silicate glass, which is okay. basically what Pyrex is. Yeah, so it's okay. stronger yeah. than say a window pane. Mm -hmm. Um, it's still breakable, yeah. But it is stronger than like a window pane or something, yeah. But uh, I don't like I don't I don't see a casual enthusiast being interested in this. So like the number of people that even want to own this, like there's a lot of people think oh, an awesome bike, yeah. and that's you know that's great. I you know I'm 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 happy so many people like it, but I don't think that there's very many people that would be the right owner for it because it's just it's gonna be the loudest shit. Yeah. Um, it, it's going to vibrate to hell yeah. and it's, you know, it's got one brake and it's kind of unique to the point where like the parts for the brake came from a Toyota, um, like a Toyota car. And so there's only one person that's going to be able to work on this thing, you know, as they wear through yeah. the brake on that, it's got to come back to me. So like, it's got to yeah. be a very, very specific type of individual if they, if, you know, if they yeah, wanted to sense. buy it. Yeah. But like after spending just about nine months on this thing, I've gotten pretty attached to it, you know? Yeah, I can imagine. Like, there is, there is a number where it could be bought, but at the yeah. same time, if, if I'm forced to keep it, I'm not at all unhappy with that. Like, yeah. It's, you know, it's so it's so unique. Because, um, yeah. like, what I would rather do is sell the next project, you know? Yeah. You know, I'd rather hold on to this and sell the next project because this is... Like, I don't think I, there's a lot of things on this. I don't think I've seen before, you know? Totally. Yeah. I think you should keep it. I mean, yeah. I'm looking forward to it. Yeah. So, yeah. I mean, it's, uh, it's, yeah. I mean, there's so many elements of it that are special. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I never, I never went into this with the idea that I was going to sell it for a million dollars, you know, like yeah. I, that wasn't the driving force behind it. Yeah. It was basically, I've got all these skills let's see what I can do. Let's find yeah, the cool. limits of where I actually am, you know? Yeah. So what, what's the, what's the number? What's the number? Oh man. You don't have to tell me. I mean, it's got six digits at least. Yeah. <laughs> it, it would have six digits. So let's, let's say, say yeah. that it'd be over, over a hundred thousand, I guess. Yeah. Um, 
yeah. But you know, and I don't know if that's realistic. It, there's there's not another one like it to compare it to. So I mean, there'll but, be there'll be hundreds of people that say that that's not and it's not realistic or whatever. But it's worth whatever someone's willing to fucking pay for it. There's seven billion people on the planet. It's exactly. It's, exactly. It's probably worth that to one more person than me. Yeah, totally. <laughs> totally. I totally agree. But so, how are you going to get to? Um, yeah, you have to fucking obviously. I, I I've asked all the other guests how you get into Born Free to see who was riding and who was trailering it. But you're obviously going to have to trailer it. Uh yeah. So um, I had a head injury a few years ago. And after that head injury, I can't do long haul driving. Like it just, right. for whatever reason, focusing on the road, I get terrible headaches. Yeah. And so my neighbor, um, who's a mile away because I'm in the country, he came over one day. He's like, oh, I'll drive you. I'm like, what? He's like, yeah, I'll, I'll, it's, it's fine. How many uh, miles is that? And then I, it's a, it's a 2,000 mile trip one way. And he's just casually like, oh, I'll, like I'll drive great you. Great dude. Fuck. I know, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, it, it turns out that he was in the army um, doing basically transport security. You know, basically yeah. he, for his whole time in the army, he drove whatever, wherever. And so oh, yeah, I'm cool. basically, I've got a professional driver come with me. Fucking um, right. And so we're just going to rent a motor home. And, uh, you know, uh, another buddy of mine, the three of us are going to go out there and, you know. Um, awesome. This, so this is a bit of a yeah. random question, not much to do with bikes. How, how much, so how, how long's the trip? 29 hours i think so uh, no like so are you going for like a week how how, how long oh, will you be away oh oh i uh, leave the 20th and i come back the 29th right so is, it, we'll is it expensive much... to rent a motorhome that long um yeah it, it because of the mileage because they charge yeah, you uh 35 35 cents a mile right uh over the 100 miles per day um right all told, it's like six thousand dollars for the motorhome, and oh. but if you look at the cost of a hotel for three guys for seven nights, yeah. you know it's it, it yeah, kind of yeah. makes yeah. sense. Yeah. Um. So and that you know we have a kitchen in the motorhome, so yeah, of like you can. Uh, my neighbor uh, raises cattle and yeah. keeps chickens, and so we've got like bacon and eggs and steak like ready to go you know yeah, sick. cool i just asked because that's like you know that's the dream me and my wife would love to just and kids uh just fucking rent a motorhome but then yeah once i was like looking online it was coming up like 10 grand for the for the trip yeah so i was like Shit. Oh, yeah. yeah 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 um so there's uh there's a way to do it it's um because like if you rent uh from an actual rental agency it's more expensive but you know just yeah. like there's airbnb for apartments there are websites oh, yeah. that are for RVs. Like private um, owners. Right. And so the place that I'm getting RV from, uh, it's just a couple that lives down the road for me who are like, we're not doing anything with the RV that that yeah. time period. So we've rented it out to you. Oh, sick. Okay, cool. Sorry. So, yeah, let's go back to... Yes. So, yeah, three of you are heading to Born Free. Yeah, yeah. Cool. Um, and they're both CDL drivers. And so, like... I don't awesome. have to do shit for, for, for those those three days out there. I don't have to do anything like that's, that's for, awesome. for once. For once, I'm not in control of that. But uh, so, have um, you got like what you're gonna do? Are you just gonna fucking gun it straight there, or are you gonna just? Are you got any stops? Um, do you? We don't have any stops planned, um, but like we will have basically depending how we run the driving an extra day if we want to stop and you know do something. I haven't picked anything out. Yeah, I kind of left it up to the other two guys. Basically, whatever you want to do, I'll just you know, I got the rental, but wherever you want to go, I'll pick. Yeah, know. yeah, cool. Um, so have you yeah. been to Born Free before? Nope. No. Okay. Cool. So this cool. this will be the first the first time for that. Awesome. Um, I'm I'm hoping to be out there. I'll find out. Oh yeah. Next, yeah. I'll find out in the next couple of days if I'll be able to make it. I hope so. Yeah. yeah I was supposed yeah. to be over there. Uh, last what what are we in now yeah last month but um yeah like the day i was supposed to be flying i'm not vaccinated and i found out that i couldn't fly because i'm not vaccinated the day i was supposed to be coming over <laughs> wow so um yeah but there's um so i was supposed to be flying on the first and then they um lifted the travel restriction on the 12th 
Not even oh, two. Come on. <laughs> yeah, I was so I was so angry. And uh, I, I had like loads of American guys because your COVID passports are different to ours. They're just paper. Yeah. But ours yeah. are an app with a QR code. And I had to show that, but apparently before I got on the plane. Right. But I've got like guys over there saying, ah, just forge one. And then I've got guys here yeah. saying, guys, oh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, totally. And I've got guys that fucking here that are saying, oh, I, I went over to America two weeks ago and I didn't even get asked. I'm like, fuck, should I have just gone for it? Should I have just done it? I don't know. Yeah. Being on the hook for that plane ticket, if you can't actually get on the plane, that would suck. Yeah. Because I don't think you get a refund at that point, right? Exactly. So I thought, right, if I just change the date now, it cost me $40 to change the date. I oh, yeah. At yeah, least sure. I've got it, you know? Yeah. But, uh, I'll, be, I'll, I'll be over. But uh, I really want to see this bike in person. So I really fucking I hope I, get, I can get over. So where about yeah. are you? Uh, so I am just outside of Bloomington, Illinois. Right. Okay. Um, cool. That is smack dab in the middle of the state of Blooming of, of Illinois. Right. Okay. Which cool. is just right in the middle of the U.S. Like we're yeah, as central as you can get. So I'm just I'm three just thinking three hours south of Chicago, maybe. Oh, okay. Cool. I'm just thinking because like uh, little Frank lives down in Tennessee now, but he's also still oh, yeah. his, he's got his house up in Decatur still. So. Uh, I don't know. If it, yeah, if I can organize a trip, maybe. Yeah, because uh, I'm a, I'm an hour north of Decatur. Yeah, that'd be it's cool. about an hour's drive. Yeah, that'd be yeah. cool just to come out and see the fucking thing. Oh meet yeah, you, meet you in person. Absolutely. That'd be amazing. Yeah. Thank you so much for coming on, man. I really do appreciate well, it. Thank you. And uh, I really hope I get to meet you in a couple of weeks at Born Free. Yeah. Um, I'm looking if, forward if to not, it. I'll come and meet. I'll come and uh, visit Frank and. We'll set something up. Yeah, I mean, it's because I'm just an hour north of Decatur. So, you know, anytime awesome. you find yourself stateside, uh, look me up. Thank so. you so much, man. Honestly, thanks. Uh, again. Take, take Have care. Have a good day, man. Cheers. Mm-hmm.